So uh, we're here uh, at, at a little chef just off the M5. Uh, it's a lovely, glamorous setting. Fantastic. But these two brave young men, Kevin and David, have driven all the way from uh, John O'Groats in the north of Scotland. Yes. Um, they're presently in Tewkesbury in Gloucestershire, just outside Tewkesbury in Gloucestershire, and they're on their way to Land's End. It's no big deal. Loads of people do that all yeah. the time. We, we left John O'Groats yesterday morning at uh, 8.30. Mm -hmm. um, we've been driving down, we've been taking it yep. easy. You know, resting during the charge stops, and we aim to be in Land's End tonight by tea time. Right. Mm. And um, yeah, that's 900 miles over two days. Mm -hmm. yeah. And I wouldn't attempt to drive that drive in a petrol car any quicker. You have to sleep. Yeah. Okay. yeah. But we wanted to just show that actually, a lot of nonsense is talked about electric vehicles yeah. being unable, you know, not practical, unable to do these sorts yeah. of trips. Yeah. And of course, there's no infrastructure. Yeah. And we just wanted to show that actually infrastructure is everywhere. We've been able to put this uh, national fast charging network in for less than £20,000, mm. which is, to, to give you a comparison, less than some of the projects to put uh, 13 amp chargers into park and rides. Right. Okay, so, uh, and we've covered the whole country for £20,000. Right. Wow. Second day to that, I suppose you could say, is another layer of 32 amp charging at £100 a time. Right. Okay, that's all it has to be, wow. £100 a time. Yep. Um, anywhere like a, a guest house or a restaurant can afford to have that to attract customers. Right. To come. So basically anywhere there's a car park. Basically. Yeah, yeah absolutely. absolutely. Yes. And that's, that's the vision, you know. Um, as I, I'm involved or, uh, with a UK registered charity and we're actually donating the 32 amp charge right. uh, hardware right. to encourage people to install it. So we, we donate the hardware and the site then takes on the responsibility of having it installed and managing it right. and then we encourage them to make it freely available to the public not to charge for electricity right. uh, because we believe electricity is cheap and just to support the growing infrastructure right. of electric vehicles. Because I mean that's the question that everyone's always asking. Mm -hmm. I mean, I've had a load of tweets about this morning how much is it actually going to cost them? And you estimated around about twenty pounds, about 20 pounds yes. in, yeah. in fuel costs, effectively. Uh -huh. Yeah. But it's electricity isn't free. But what you're saying is, in, in for these for this specific period, while you're encouraging mm -hmm. that, yeah. there's no charge. So when, there's a lot of people have asked that. So if I park outside that hotel and I plug in, aren't yeah. they going to charge me? But you're well, saying not. There, there's, sorry, David. There, there are all sorts of models that the the locations will adopt. Most hotels that we're talking to will say, well, if you have a meal with us, then yeah. of course we'll waive the, the electricity. Because right. what? I mean, what would the electricity cost them? It's to, about, to, to, for a commercial establishment, it's about three pound fifties worth of electricity to right. this car. So it's not a great deal. It's right. like a bottle no. of mineral, posh yeah. mineral water. Yeah. Isn't Absol it, really? Absolutely. I have one at home. However, the point is that I, I never use it at 70 amps because right. I never, I've never driven 250 miles. And then had yeah, to recharge charge, it really quick. Right, well, yeah, I always yeah. charge actually plugging into the 13 amp socket. In, right. You know, Which because, is what I do at home. yeah, it's because what you it's do not. Oh, that's the other thing, isn't it? It's 90% yeah. of the yeah. time. That's yeah, what absolutely. You do. Yeah. And this is all about when we're out and about yeah, and what yeah. we want to do with the 32 amp you know the what zero carbon world is trying to do here is just make sure that absolutely everywhere you go like this location yeah there's a, there's a, a very there's simple 32 yeah. amp sockets on the parking base yeah. and you chuck it and bear in mind the socket itself the the 32 amp socket is eight pounds retail right so you know we're, we're it's not a huge it's, no because exactly. i've always argued that you know a, a filling station like that one there costs yeah millions yeah, of pounds to install exactly. and this is a bunch of sticks yeah. with, yeah, with yeah, a plug on the top yeah exactly yes. you know, and go to any expensive. caravan park any yeah. marina yeah. you They've can see them all right already, yes. you know. it's not only a lot of myths about the actual cars themselves there's a lot of myths yeah. about how you recharge them oh exactly. absolutely yeah. Yeah. yeah yeah there's yeah. there's a lot of work to be done yeah. Yeah. no very good all right i'll let you get on your way don't want to delay yes. you any longer no thank you very much well done good luck cheers good luck give us a wave from land's end when you get there I've just taken in quite how big a car this is. It's quite a large car. <laughs> the front of the bonnet is such a long way away. That's right. So, so put your foot on the brake. Foot on the brake. And just select drive. And take, do, I, do I press, press the P it. button? Press the P, that's it. Okay, and just touch the accelerator more now away. Wow. You can now just drive it as if it was right. a, a standard um, automatic car. Yeah. Uh, but there's no automatic. Extraordinary. So I just quickly want to say, because this is, uh, we, uh, we haven't got very long, this is Andrew from Rolls-Royce. Now, you're very much involved in the engineering behind this. Yes, I was the project manager of right. the car. 
so you do know what, how it works and why we're going along. But we're in. So can you tell me exactly what the car is, what the model is? So this is actually a um, 102ex. So this is our electric Phantom. It's right. a fully electric car. Right. Um, it has two electric motors um, above the rear axle, uh, driving through its gearbox, um, and it is 100% electric. I just want to say this is the first time I've ever driven a Rolls Royce, and I'm so thrilled that I'm driving a Rolls Royce that is electric. I mean, it is, a, it is an absolute wonderful thing. I saw the car, first of all, at the Geneva Motor Show, where, yes. it, boy, did it get a lot of attention, didn't it? I mean, so it, many people were... It was so popular, wasn't yeah. it? How much does it weigh then? Um, it weighs um, about uh, 2,900 kilograms, which is about 250 kilograms above the the weight of the, the, weight of the, of the standard, standard cars. Bomb, is it? Yeah, right. so it is heavier. We, we use the car as a fully functioning Phantom. We've got all the bells and whistles. We've got the fridge in the back. Right. Um, we've got the full theatre configuration. So um, <laughs> it is, it is, in a, it is a proper, in league. Yeah. It's a proper car. Yeah. But I've never driven another Rolls Royce. In terms of its handling and in the, terms way of the way it moves, is it drives, fairly, fairly familiar? It is actually very similar. Right. Um, it's, a, it's a very similar uh, drive characteristic. Um, it's a little bit um, heavier in the front end, and right. you tend to feel that a little bit when you're cornering. Right. Um, and the suspension has is coping quite well with the additional weight we right. haven't changed in the suspension. Right, I see, so that's absolutely standard. That's but then, so then the other thing that I think is brilliant that you've done, the the, the, the way the car is charged, because you do have a regular plug. Yes, we can, can we plug can it, plug it the, in, and we, yeah. as normal, so we can plug it into three phase. Right. Um, and we can plug it into a, a, just a standard domestic socket. Right. Um, and that's fine as well. Um, but we've also, um, we're trialing this inductive charging system, yeah. where you just drive the car over its um, parking uh, location and it will automatically um, uh, start um, uh, charging the batteries. Right, and, and do you know roughly how long it takes? To, these are all the questions I know these, I'll get these are, always, these are always, always um, the questions. Well, we basically on three phase, um, we take around about, from a, for a complete charge, is around about um, seven and a half to eight hours. Right. Um, on a domestic charge, you're around about 20 hours if you were plugged into an ordinary like 13 amp an socket. Ordinary right. 13 amp socket. And, um, Oh, look at that, it has no trouble going up the hill. Oh no, Beautiful. It's, yeah, great ability. In fact, we left the other cars behind, the cars behind us can't keep up, they just can't manage. They've got to change gear, we don't know how to do that. The, no, there's no changing gear. Right. Um, and with the inductive plate, it takes around about 10 hours. Right. It's a little slower, it's not quite quite. Right. But it is still putting in about seven, seven and a half kilowatts into the battery. Right. So that's quite an it's impressive quite amount. Yes, yeah. Especially over a 130 millimeter air cap. Yes, that's the magic thing. I that think. is extraordinary. I mean, uh, what I love about that is that that although that technology now for us is is somehow very modern, with things like the charging pads for phones and things. Yes, it was actually developed well over a hundred years. A long time it? ago. I'm sure, it's very early days from the point of view of what you'll do with this in the future. But do you envisage a time when you'll actually be producing these as sort of production cars or something along these well, lines? Well, well, we actually built this really as a one-off demonstrator, right. um, and we really want to see. And, and see what customers think right. about driving something other than a V12. Yes. Many of our customers, they only can imagine driving a V12 petrol engine. Right. We have to look to the future, yeah. and, and we've got to try and work out what is going to be the, the right type of technology for Rolls-Royce in the future. Right. Um, this is this is one solution. There are other solutions that, that obviously we're looking at. Yeah. But but just getting people engaged, getting our customer base engaged. Yes. Is always quite difficult. Um, they're all very busy people, but we're finding that this is really quite useful. It was good in London, getting people who actually drive Rolls Royces themselves, right. they own them, and, and get them to try and to try this car. And what was their general reaction? I, mean, I think very intrigued they were they were very very much surprised. Right. Um, so you, they were they were skeptical before they actually. I think went some were quite skeptical, yeah. um, but once they'd driven the car and they realised that around town, you know, the acceleration. Is very comparable to what they're used to. Right. Um, I, I know the 0 to 60 is slightly slower than our um, petrol engine right. car, but the actual usable torque, once you've got the car rolling, is actually greater. Right. So they actually quite enjoyed that experience. Yeah. Put on power, uh, yep. yeah, and then into drive, Ooh. and off we go. Oh my goodness, lots of things have happened. Mm -hmm. Oh, look at them. Oh, I like that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm impressed by things like that. No, no. no that, that, that. So then I'll. That well, goes I know. into drive. Yeah, it comes up on here. There. 
So you're in reverse. I'm in reverse. Yeah. Neutral. Drive. There we go. And oh, there's no, there's no, is there? There is a part break. Part break was not. Yeah. I, I tell you what I'll do now. I'll look for other road users. <laughs> just you know, just casually, <laughs> rather than just drive into something. So that this is really intriguing. That I should just quickly say that this is the. It's a, it is a prototype. It's a prototype. It's not the, the production it's vehicle. It's not the production vehicle no. of the Vauxhall Ampera. Yes. And how do you say Ampera? Ampera. Ampera, good. Yes. So it's, we're running purely on batteries yes. at the moment, an electric motor, but mm -hmm. it does have a petrol engine. Yes. It has you, a, you refer to it as a generator. So we, It's actually a range extender. So a range um, extender. The Vauxhall Ampera is an extended range electric vehicle, an right. e-rev. Um, and it will probably be the first of its kind to come to market in the UK when it arrives early in 2012. It's essentially, um, it's got a battery on board which uh, powers the uh, car for the first 50 miles, so up to right. 50 miles, and that covers 80% of um, UK drivers. 80% yeah. of us, apparently, drive less than 35 yeah. miles a day. So 29, I've heard, uh, well, government there we go. statistic. Yeah. <laughs> So um, effectively, if you use this as a pure electric vehicle, which many people will, you'll have zero tailpipe emissions right. um, for up to 50 miles. If you got in a situation where you didn't have time or you didn't want to charge it after your, your 50 miles, um, the engine, the battery gets to a minimum state of charge, so it's never empty. Right. Um, there's always a buffer there because batteries don't like to be fully um, empty or yeah. fully charged at any one time, um, and that. Basically, what happens is the um, battery, as I say, gets a minimum state of charge, and then a petrol engine will kick in at, to act as a generator. Right. So the, it runs at a flat optimum level, and it provides electricity to the drive unit right. to turn the wheels. Right. It doesn't ever charge the battery because the most efficient, efficient way to charge the battery is to plug it in, but it right. does sustain the charge. Right. So it never lets it go below its minimum state of charge. I'm with you. Right. And in that mode, you've got a further 310 miles before you need to worry about either put, putting petrol in right. or charging the battery. It, it, the way we sort of term it, the way we like to, to think of it is, it's probably going to be the first electric car that you can use every day and not have to worry about yeah. it, not change any of your driving habits. You've got four seats, you've got a useful boot. Yeah. There won't be the need to have a second car um, yes. for longer journeys. Yeah. You can just treat it as you would a normal car. Yeah. And also you're using the traditional combustion engine when you are using it in the most efficient way. And so this is coming to market in the UK when it's yes. not a prototype anymore, yes. in uh, early, what, early, early next year, yeah. right? Because a lot of people will ask that. And then, so with a 50 mile range, then, so mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's going to be a, 50 miles, yeah. up to 50 miles. So it's a slightly smaller battery than, say, something like the iMeV or the Leaf or the Ion. Yes, although, yeah. but, so, therefore, the charging, because that's the other thing, people always say, how long will it take to charge? And I always say, it's, while you're asleep, so I don't even worry about it. But Yeah, it's um, you can charge it through a domestic socket, so there's no need for any special um, sort of fast charging or anything right. like that um, for four hours, and you've got a full battery. So it's four hours, yeah. that is a real difference, isn't it? That's, yeah. Four hours. Um, on a 13 amp. On a 13 amp. A normal plug, yeah.